Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Net Producer Magazine, reporting to you from the Willamette Valley of Oregon. It's it's a it's a beautiful day. We've got a lot of hazelnuts uh, acreage going into production here, and organic acreage as well. I'm here with Taylor Larson of the Oregon Organic Hazelnut Cooperative. It's a it's a, a new and emerging uh, group of uh, growers that are are working to convert a lot of acreage to organic because that's that's a uh, a popular trend, right? You know, and there's 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 a market for that, but there's challenges, right? When it comes to organic production, how do you fight off these pests and diseases? And that's what we wanted to talk to Taylor about today, primarily um, eastern filbert blight and filbert worm. So tell us about it. Sure. The eastern filbert blight is definitely a challenge for both conventional and organic growers. Um, for newer growers, there are varieties that have been coming out of Oregon State over the last decade that are highly resistant to the eastern filbert blight. So it's not as big a concern in a lot of the newer plantings. Um, So any of the trees we have here are all uh, resistant varieties. We do still scout for it because these are resistant, not immune, and that's important to remember, and that may change as time goes on and things evolve. But uh, in the older orchards, it is definitely a challenge, and for the organics, we don't have the fungicides available to conventional growers. And for us, like down the road, we manage an older orchard that does have some eastern filbert blight in it. And we basically, our management strategy is we scout it very heavily and prune it out whenever we see it. And so that is relatively labor intensive. A lot of the organic practices are a little bit more labor intensive, and that's why I think you'll see a lot of the farms are, are smaller in size. Right. Yeah. Now, regarding filbert worm, that's probably the, the worst pest oh, yeah. of the industry, right? What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so if, if, you, if you don't manage for filbert worm, uh, you can see your, your infestation rate go as high as like 50, 60% of your, of your nut crop will be unsaleable. Um, so obviously nobody who is trying to produce nuts for sale is going to do that. Right. Um, and when, so growing organically and managing for, for filbert worm or filbert moth is, it's tricky, but what we do is we really try and take kind of a systems approach and think about, how, you know, what is, what is the moth's life cycle and when is it most vulnerable and what can we do to sort of discourage it from living around here? Right. Um, and it's especially tricky because uh, the filbert worm is native to Oregon. It's been here far longer than people have and uh, and definitely longer than uh, cultivated hazelnut varieties have. So it's a native and it lives primarily in uh, Oregon white oak and infests the acorns of that species. So if you have oaks surrounding your hazelnut orchards, which in the Willamette Valley, chances are that's probably the case, um, they have the potential to serve as um, like a host for uh, reinfestation of your orchards. Right. So we try and manage at a landscape scale. Um, we also raise pigs on our farm, and we'll run them through the oaks just as the acorns are falling in order to pick up every last acorn. They're really effective at that, and that interrupts the life cycle of the moth in those environments. And then we'll also actually run the hogs through the orchard after harvest just to make sure that we get every last nut. Wow. Um, and there's other strategies, too. Uh, we monitor very closely. Um, so these traps right here are hung throughout the orchard. And uh, we'll be checking these every uh, four to five days just to monitor pest levels. And if we need to treat, uh, there are some organic sprays available to us. We haven't had to do that in this orchard yet, um, but it is a tool in the tool belt for organic growers. Um, but if you can minimize uh, having to spray for the, for, for the moth, um, you're going to be better off in the long run because... Most of these uh, sprays, even the organic ones, are broad spectrum. They're not just killing the moth. They're, they can kill a lot of other soft-bodied insects and uh, kind of throw off the balance of your, your orchard ecosystem. So we try and minimize that. Um, there's also what's called pheromone disruption, where it's another really powerful tool available to organic growers. And basically what you're doing is you're, you can flood the orchard with the uh, female moth's sex pheromone during mating season and then the moths won't be able to find each other right so that that probably works for lower infestations right so the exactly so the you know 
coming back to that systems approach, it's like there is no silver bullet to uh, to to controlling the filbert moth. It's kind of you got to use all the tools in your tool belt and use the appropriate tool at the appropriate time. And organic growers have fewer tools, but there's a lot of really great options, especially if you uh, are using them strategically together. Great. Well, hey, thanks for those tips. Uh, be sure, if for those of you growers out there that are that are trying to convert to organic or trying to spray less, uh, be sure to get in touch with these guys. Read more about it in Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, PacificNutProducer.com. <laughs>